The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good, Lewis. It's happy Friday today, folks. So remember, they are having the uh, Labor Week all across China. So that pretty much shuts down the first week of um, May every year. And I believe it's a holiday. No, yesterday was the holiday. No, today's a holiday in um, uh, the UK or something. Someone told me that. I don't remember what it was, but I thought it was a holiday somewhere. Anyway, it's not a holiday here. Okay, and let me think. Someone's asking me, what do I think of concentrated orange juice futures? I think the price of oranges are so cheap, I would rather buy the fresh stuff and squeeze it. I haven't traded orange juice in 50 years, and I'm not going to. The reason why, folks, when I first started trading orange juice, the entire orange juice pit, the entire orange juice pit was, you're not going to believe this, run by one family. There was nothing but brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, everybody in that pit was related. And boy, did they know how to work the spreads on bid and ask. Okay, let's uh, take a, and by the way, just for uh, uh, information purposes, if you watch Trading Places, uh, the trading that took uh, place in the orange juice pit was actually the silver pit, and those traders that were in there were actual traders at the Comex, and um, it was quite a big party from what I understand, uh, and everybody really enjoyed it uh, very much. In fact, thank you for the tidbit yesterday that uh, the uh, that congressman from Minnesota, Al Franken, was in that movie. I, I I hadn't noticed him before. I wasn't, you know, I don't follow politics too much, but he was one of the handlers of the gorilla when he was on his way on his honeymoon over to Africa. Now I'm going to spend just a little time here with the DAX and the FTSE, and then I want to get on. I'm going to have a little gift for you here today. And the key word here is free. So we'll be watching here what we've got here. Uh, uh, I will. I will definitely use the euro, Bob. I'm, I've got that. That's the first thing on my list because we've been, you know, been very bullish that, and we're going to see where it's going to go here. Let's put on here a second here. Um, as you can see on these charts here with the Nasdaq, with the DAX, and the FTSE, that there are some smaller patterns there. These are four-hour charts, and uh, one of them is a daily chart, the other is a four-hour. But you can see the patterns work on any time frame. And what Alan is doing here is he's basically putting up uh, uh, the patterns that he sees on a longer, longer and shorter-term time frame. Remember, they have predictability uh, within a certain degree. They're certainly not 100 percent. There's uh, ne no, that's never going to happen. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to post in here a book that you can get. It's called The Disciplined Trader uh, by Norman Hallett. It's the same uh, same title as, as Mark Douglas' book, but uh, that book is, oh, what happened to it? Yeah, there it is. Yes, if you go to that link, uh, you can get the free book. I, I haven't got it yet. I listened to the um, webinar a little bit yesterday, and he's got some nice little things in there. There might be one or two tidbits, and because it's free, you know, you might want to take a look at it. Uh, what you have to get up, what you have to give up to get it free, you know, I don't I don't really know. So let's just move on here and start covering. But by the way, we have Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly, is going to be our guest today at 930. So that will be something very nice. And uh, what do we have here? Uh, oh, we got Shane next Tuesday for sure, and I believe we're going to have. Um, oh, we're nope, I'm on the wrong list. Well, this is May first already. Shut the front door and raise her in. On Tuesday, we're going to have David Paul, uh, you know, who's helped with Tom Hugard, and we have Norm Winsky on uh, Wednesday, and on Thursday we're going to have Andrew Piccoli again for the Foundation for Study Cycles. And by the way, folks, tomorrow, Saturday, is that free webinar for the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. So um, make sure you go in and uh, try to uh, link, link onto that because anything you can learn on some of these things, uh, every little bit uh, every little bit will help. At least it does me. And I'm Trading is a journey. It's not a destination. Always remember that. John Hill told me that in 19. 
1970, and he was certainly right. What you want to do is you want to have, uh, don't you want to have any trouble when you have to go over the California Rockies, and you don't want to be going through something like Donner Pass every day. You just want to try to make it a little bit fun. All right, let's start out with the euro because I'm going to do the dollar index because that's the, the reverse of the euro because the dollar index is so clear that it's, uh, well, <laughs> clear as mud, I guess. Let's take a look here at what we're looking at right here. This is the, the dollar index. If you remember about eight days ago, it was back in late day, around the 26th of April, <clears throat> uh, six days, seven days ago, you notice that that dollar index could not take out the high of April 1st. Now, the euro did that on the downside. The euro was making a low down there at that 107.40 level. And now you see how it's been one, two, three, four, five, six days now, and we're coming down and we're challenging all the resistance and our support down at 9,800. When that breaks, folks, that ABCD structure is going to take you down to 95.10, and that's going to make the euro moving pretty quick. Now, it either holds this support right here, and it could. The reason why is that low we have today in the U.S. dollar index, uh, and it matches the low of yesterday, that low is a 78% retracement of the low in late March, right around the 28th. So that's why it's so key. Even if it holds here, I think all you'll get is a small bump up and then move down. Now, someone's asked me a question. I did a video on this, and someone asked me a question. Why, why, would, the, why would the euro be strong given the fact that uh, – Things are, uh, you know, so bad in Europe. And I, I say, hey, I don't know anything about that. All I'm looking at is what the price action is doing. Hey, you know, these markets move around a lot, folks. That's uh, So you just have to do one thing at a time. I'm just looking at the patterns and trying to see where support and resistance is and do some simple time counts and uh, stuff like that. The one thing that that cycle thing will do for you on Saturday is help you with, it will help you with time counts. And what do I mean by time count? Look at the low here in the U.S. dollar index back here on the 25th of March. If you count the number of days that went up to, and then the number of days that it went down, you know that equal days, in other words, went the same days up, the same days down, and it did it again. And we're doing it again right now. So we could hold support right here. So that's all you're doing is you're just trying to say, okay, this is what it looks like. Do you want to know what's going to happen next? Wait till you go up to heaven and talk to God, and she'll explain to you. But you're not going to get it in the commodity markets. You're not going to get it in the stock market. And you're not going to get it in the Forex market. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. All you can do is manage your risk, and that's the best you can do. So you have to... What's the old uh, the old uh, uh, Navy SEAL? Live fast, love hard, die young, and make a good-looking corpse. I, I think I told this story. I was playing poker up in uh, Scottsdale oh, a couple of years ago, and I was playing uh, in a game, a uh, little tournament, a little $50 buy-in. I was playing next to a guy that had tattoos. And uh, on his left arm, and he, he ended up telling me he was a Navy SEAL, on his left arm was a tattoo called... Um, Killing is my business. And on his right arm, business was good. And I said, wow. I said, those are pretty uh, pretty wild uh, tattoos. But since we're talking about tattoos, I have to tell you a better one than this. We were having lunch at Rocco's. Those of you that have been out to visit me here at the best pizza in, in, in Arizona. Oh, we'll, t we'll get back to the pizza in just a bit. It's another story about tattoos that I think you'll like. 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and believe it or not, I don't know how he got through with these lines being as jammed as they are. Thanks, Al. Great job. I think we have Mr. Z from Philly on the line. What's up, buddy? <laughs> yes, uh, remember, uh, Larry, uh, Al Franken was on the cast of SNL way mm -hmm. back when and therefore was good pals with Eddie Murphy and... Um, was Harold Ramis involved with that film at all? Well, Ackroyd, of course. Um, yes. So, uh, so that's why Franken was in that film. Well, I didn't even know that. Well, I don't watch that. So, you know, I've never seen an episode of Seinfeld either. I'm probably the only person on the planet that hasn't, but I've never seen an episode of that. So, anyway, what can I do for you, my friend? Happy uh, Friday crop, to you, by the uh, way. Yes, uh, new crop soybeans, Larry. That'd be the November contract. <clears throat> Yes, uh, I've been bottom pick, uh, bottom picking trading from the long side since mid March. Um, I'm wondering if you can show your uh, pattern analysis on that. Tell me what you see with that, and and if you've heard any input that's of value from either Cy or Rich, um, I'd be uh, I'd be interested in hearing if you could. So thanks. Sure. Uh, new crop soybeans, folks, are, they haven't even began to uh, plant them, but it'll be, no, they are planting now, aren't they? Uh, forget that's already, oh my gosh, they've been planted already. This is the first of May, for heaven's sakes. Um, basically, what you're looking at here, uh, John, is we had a new low just recently, and now we're in the midst of making a ABCD pattern here. Um, you know, there could be a bottom in there, and the reason why is we just took out those previous lows by just a couple of pennies and then immediately reversed, and uh, so there's a possibility possibility of having something moving there. But as uh, Cy mentioned, as he was on the show earlier this week, you know, the uh, they're just waiting for some demand to come in. You know, there's plenty of supply and they're, you know, trying to find out what it's uh, what it's going. Hmm. That's really. Uh, so anyway, that's what I'm seeing in that. So I'm not sure if. Uh, 
if that's what you're looking for. But I think we're going to get at least another 15 or 20 cents to complete that ABCD pattern that's there. Thank you on that, Larry. Um, uh, you and I both know from long experience, yours longer than mine, that um, any time in uh, February, March, or April, uh, if the uh, new crop, uh, if the new crop um, futures, be it corn, wheat, beans, oats, whatever, uh, are making contract lows, it's always a time to. Um, uh, to take a good hard look at, at the very least and uh, more likely be trading from the long side because, you, ne you know, of course, we never know what Mother Nature throws us with the uh, planting, growing, or harvest seasons. And uh, uh, as we know, you know, the, uh, the rallies when they're weather-related in these commodities in those uh, ag futures, those rallies literally uh, take the time of like 60 days or less. Um, so, uh, so hence my interest in looking right here. But uh, you've laid it out nicely for us, so I thank you. Okay. Well, I'm glad to help a little bit. And uh, what do you think of the silver market, my friend? It's having a trouble of breaking above 16 bucks uh, an ounce, and now we're down at $15 an ounce. What's your feeling here on the silver, John? Larry, when it broke, 13.85 back in March. Uh, my idea of an emerging bull market was proven wrong. Ever since, I don't know. <laughs> so uh, uh, I, uh, I go back to something you mentioned, namely uh, we had the high up at 1965. That was what, uh, back in Labor Day? The low was 1165. I think the Fib 618 retracement resistance is uh, what 1660. So we got to get over that to uh, to prove a bull uh, a bull phase emerging. So uh, until then, I'm um, uncertain and won't even try to guess. Okay, well, I'm guessing all the time myself, folks. So you're <laughs> welcome to the club. And there's a lot Thank of you, people Larry. in Bye. the club. That's for sure. Okay, folks, let's take a quick thanks, John, for calling in. Really appreciate it. We're going to go to crude oil, folks, because, you know, we're having uh, problems, you know, uh, trading the uh, June and July. I post the open interest here. You can see here that uh, we're actually under 200000 now today. You'll notice that the second biggest one after July is uh, December. So any of those after that, I'm actually looking at uh, August because that will start picking up a little bit. But uh, I want to show you the, the price action in the crude oil just so – Maybe this will help. Maybe it won't. I don't know. But it's my two cents worth. So at least you'll be able to see what's going on. All right. Let's move up here. Uh, here's the crude. And this is going back. Uh, this is the June crude that takes us all the way down to $6. And we pointed it out. You don't see that uh, bottom there, which was an ABCD pattern on the 60-minute chart. You only see it on a 15-minute chart because the ups and downs are so fast, you, you didn't get the delineation because it happened so quickly. But what we did last night is that we hit a 61% retracement on June crude from the high that it made at 29.60. And you'll notice that during April, it was all the way down, you know, until we made that monster bottom there at $6. We come up, rallied back to a 61% retracement, and we hit the 61% retracement last night. And you know what we did, folks? We came all the way down to $18 a barrel and rallied up another $2 a barrel to hit that same number again. That number equally is this. In other words, when you've got the June crude at roughly 2080, at what that point was, that number on the August crude was five, uh, $25. So there's a $5 swing between the June and the August. The reason why is the market is saying, well, we anticipate prices are going to be much higher in August, so you're going to have to pay a premium if you want to buy those options. So that's what we're watching. Um, whether whether prices go back to zero or minus zero, I don't know. But all you have to do is to follow the open interest. If you come into June in about three weeks, and we'll do that here, if you see there's a big open interest in June, okay, and the market is weakening, and you're coming into those last two days, they've got somebody stuck again. But believe me, folks, that probably is not going to happen again. The 
fellow that made the mistake in Singapore was a, uh, you know, he was a, the son of the guy who ran the, the fund there, and uh, you, he made a mistake, and you don't see those. Hey, nobody's ever seen this before. Crude oil go minus $37 negative. That means every time you fill up your gas, they're going to give you $40? Give me a break. Not going to happen. All right. Now we got a guest coming up pretty soon. I want to take a quick look at the stock market here just to show you the E-mini S&P. If you look at patterns and stuff, you'll see that we, we made a little above the 61% retracement here in the E-mini S&P. Uh, and now uh, we're up there two days. And then you see the 61% retracement comes in at 2800 any close below 2800 folks, sets up a much lower market. Any move above 2940 sets up a higher market. That's basically what you're looking at when you're seeing these. I don't know how to say it any other than that. Uh, do I have a recent chart of Apple? Uh, Dennis, I, uh, uh, you know what I'll do? I can do this because we're going to have a break here to, t to pay some bills, and then we're going to have... Um, Tim Boss, the Financial Cycles Weekly on the air, and then we'll be able to uh, do this. So give me one second here, and I'll be able to get these up here quickly, I think. And we'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and we have on the line from Sarasota, Florida, Tim Bost, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, how are you doing today? I'm excellent, Larry. How about yourself? Are you exercising caution when you walk outside? <laughs> Trying to avoid it as much as possible. <laughs> the exercising part, anyway. <laughs> Tim. Uh, um, we have uh, uh, still uh, putting on the face masks and limiting our outdoor exposure. Uh, we've got uh, a little bit of a local hotbed here. Our uh, uh, rate of uh, new cases is about double the state average in this local area. So it's uh, a pretty precarious situation. Well, one of the reasons, one of the only reason you can live in that county is you have to have white hair, don't you? That's right. <laughs> yeah, you know that's. Uh, I'm, I'm getting uh, there, hair by hair. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Certainly, by the end uh, of this experience, we're going to be totally snow white. <laughs> yeah, I, I spent uh, I spent two and a half months there from November through January in 1986-87, uh, doing the book with Dr. Miller there in Sarasota. And uh, I remember I couldn't believe how many. I mean, I, I knew it was retirement area, but boy, that's really a hot bit. Let's forget that. Let's talk about the markets. I know you're uh, you, you've got some dates up here, starting with uh, May 19th. What are you seeing, Tim? Yeah, uh, this is an interesting uh, historical re review here uh, because uh, we were looking at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which occurred a little earlier this year, and uh, we've seen some interesting uh, market dynamics because of this. Uh, but I was doing a little bit of research and, and mm -hmm. uh, realized that this was a fairly rare phenomenon, uh, but it only occurred uh, a few times uh, in the last hundred years. The last, uh, <laughs> the previous three times we saw this was back in May of 1915, and then. In August of 1947, uh, and then in November of 1982, we had this lineup back in uh, January of this year on January 12th. The next time we're going to see this won't be until 2053. Uh, so uh, it's uh, interesting when we look at a, a, an outer planet alignment like this that occurs uh, very rarely because of the slow speed of the planets. What can we do about market analysis with that? Well, obviously, we don't have enough previous occurrences to be able to do uh, you know, statistically significant backtesting and say, well, this is what we're predicting based on uh, how the things have happened in the past uh, when we, we get uh, very, very few examples like this. Uh, but what I was doing uh, was tracking the date of the event itself and, uh, and looking back to see what we could learn about that. Uh, the alignment occurred on uh, the 12th of January, uh, which was uh, a Sunday, and so we took the uh, a chart for the S&P and paid attention to the price levels set on the, the pre previous trading day, which was uh, Friday. And uh, the low for Friday uh, was at uh, 32.60.86. Uh, uh, that was on fr uh, Friday, January the, the 10th. Uh, and so I was uh, watching that price level and uh, we continue to move higher to the, the record high a little bit uh, uh, later on uh, as we got the, the year underway. Uh, but then we began to see that topping action and the big gap down that occurred on February 24th. Uh, and it's interesting because when the S&P made that gap, the daily high on February 24th uh, was at uh, 32.59.81, or less than... Uh, uh, we're one point away from that exact low uh, set uh, to coincide with that uh, Saturn-Pluto uh, alignment there. So uh, that uh, became an interesting uh, dynamic, which uh, then uh, encouraged me to take a look at some further uh, action with uh, Saturn and Pluto uh, in understanding the potential for the, for the trading action uh, coming out of that. Well, that's an interesting concept of that gap being the same price it was on January 12th. That's uh, you can't make that up. No, exactly, and it was it was very very precise. Again, within one point on the S and P, so that's a, a sufficient fudge factor, I think. <laughs> one point. <laughs> yeah, I think you're okay there for sure. Tim, we've got a question from one of our listeners, and it's about Pluto. Is that a few years back they just said it wasn't a planet, and then it became a planet again? What was that all about? <laughs> 
Well, we've got uh, two groups uh, here working and trying to understand what happens in the heavens, uh, the astrologers and the astronomers. And the astronomers uh, like to do scientific observation, and they do a great job of it, by the way, in studying what happens in the cosmos you know, with the planetary uh, dynamics. And they've got their telescopes and are uh, putting telescopes out into space now, and we're learning more and more about the nature of the universe uh, through our friends in the astronomical uh, community. Uh, the astrologers uh, try to observe what's going on astronomically and then uh, figure out what the implications are for life here on Earth. So it's a little bit of a different spin on things. The astronomical community a few years back uh, got into an argument about what qualifies to make something a planet. <laughs> and so they have their annual conferences and debates and things of that sort. And they concluded that Pluto was really uh, too small uh, to be officially a planet, and so they demoted it to dwarf uh, planet status, and then it kind of went back and forth, and, and uh, they, they discovered that Pluto is actually very, very tiny and has a very big moon orbiting around it. Uh, so there was all kinds of debate back and forth, uh, and uh, essentially, uh, it's all a matter of terminology. The, there is a, an object out there called Pluto uh, from our astrological perspective, mm -hmm. when we try to figure out what this means for us and for the markets, uh, we're looking at the orbits and, and the cycles relative to that, and that's one of the reasons we're looking at Pluto and Saturn in this example we're looking at here today. Wow, okay, that answers that question. Thank you very much. Now, I wanted to bring the next chart up, which is um, from Financial Cycles Weekly, and I think this is the Fibonacci Galactic Trader, isn't it? Right, right. Now, what we've done yeah. here, and, and this is uh, uh, superimposing on that, uh, you know, we, we uh, uh, put in that uh, resistance line there at uh, 326086, uh, congruent with that uh, uh, Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And then what we've added on this first chart is the Saturn lines. It says over on the left there, Saturn ninth harmonic. And these are the projections using the Fibonacci Galactic Trader Program uh, based on the positions of the planet Saturn over time, and then we project that into the ninth harmonic, which gives us that parallel line effect. And you'll note here that when we go back into uh, late March with the uh, uh, the bottom uh, uh, for the, the S&P, uh, that trading bar hit right on that Saturn line, uh, and it found a, a springboard then, in effect, uh, based on Saturn. Uh, so what we're seeing here is uh, the fact that the Saturn and Pluto dynamics continue to be a factor, even though we're well past that e exact astrological event on the 12th of January. Uh, so by projecting that uh, and, and seeing the, the resonance with Saturn, uh, then it uh, uh, made sense to, on, on the following chart, to add in the lines for, for Pluto, also in the ninth harmonic. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we'll note here is that we have, across the middle of the chart, a heavier line. That's the first harmonic uh, position, or the, or the line representing the actual position uh, in uh, in space of uh, of the planet that we're looking at, and so these those uh, thinner lines in both cases uh, are simply the harmonic uh, resonances with that. Okay, we're going to pay a few bills, Tim, if you don't mind, and we'll have you back in just a minute or two. Okay, I'll hang on. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back, folks. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. 
That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with uh, Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly. Tim, I noticed on the chart that uh, you're not showing any Fibonacci numbers, and yet it's called the Fibonacci Galactic Trader. Uh, it's been fifth. Oh my gosh, it's been more than 20 years since I've looked at this program. Can Can you explain that to me? I mean, shouldn't there be some Fibonacci numbers there somewhere? Uh, yes, and in fact, uh, this program is, is very, very powerful, uh, and it's, it's a combination of two modules. One is the Fibonacci Trader, and the other is the Galactic Trader, uh, and it is possible to put uh, the Fibonacci retracement lines on the same chart, uh, and in, uh, in a lot of the work that I do, I, I frequently have that in, in play as well, uh, and we look at, at uh, those Fibonacci retracement zones, uh, and there are also a number of uh, uh, proprietary indicators uh, that were developed by the, 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 the late uh, Robert Krauss uh, that are included with the program as well as all the standard uh, technical analysis uh, tools uh, and in these particular charts I just have that turned off uh, to make it a little clearer of what the oh. planetary price lines are doing in this example so oh, very uh, good. certainly very the good. program is capable of doing that and oftentimes I'm looking at charts that mm -hmm. look like a plate of spaghetti <laughs> but uh, you know hey. uh, try, try to make it as simple as possible for, for, for these interviews anyway. Well, you're talking to Italian, so plate of spaghetti is right <laughs> up my alley. Uh, Tim, we're, we're, I, I want to... Get technical you, indicators you, and, a, and a little bit of marinara sauce and we're good to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I prefer the bolognese, but anyway, okay. uh, you're, uh, folks, Tim is doing something that we don't get here very often, and he is making a prediction here, and I love this. I don't know whether you know it's right or wrong or not, but the fact that you're willing to you know put your uh, uh, your antipasto on the plate and say this is where we should be, you're looking at uh, 26, 25 around May 11th. Right, right. And okay. so based on, on all this, uh, one, we circled that area on the chart because Wednesday of this week, of course, we had a little bit of a, uh, at least a short-term reversal uh, in, the, in the markets uh, with a high uh, for the S&P that day at uh, uh, 
uh, it was uh, 29, uh, 53.26, uh, which put it right on uh, that heavy blue line, which is the first harmonic Pluto line. Uh, wow. So the market is continuing to respond to these Saturn and Pluto dynamics. Uh, and so that was a confirming factor there. Uh, so I'm looking for a continuation of, the, of a downtrend at this point, uh, short term at least. And uh, some of my previous uh, cycle uh, analysis had suggested uh, that the May 11th date would be a significant opportunity for a trading mm -hmm. bottom. And mm -hmm. so what I'm looking at here, that, and that's because on May 11th, we have Saturn uh, going into retrograde motion on, on that particular day. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that will, will have some weight, some significance uh, mm -hmm. 10 days from now when we, we get to that uh, Saturn station. And I was just projecting on the basis of that Saturn line, the price level of 26.25 or approximately uh, would be hitting the Saturn line uh, on that particular date. So that's how we came up with that uh, that forecast. <laughs> but, I like uh, that. We'll see how now, it turns out. Right? <laughs> we're gonna, we're, Tim, Tim, trust me, I've got some information for you here. I've just received approval from TFNN to have you on the show on May 11th. Okay. <laughs> and and t Tim, they told me just now that if it's not there, Say goodbye, Tim. No, we wouldn't okay. have you on on May 11th, and we'll see where it is. You know, sword of you, you, hanging over me. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know who that sword was, but that's that's pretty good. The one that you know, you're wrong. I mean, everybody's wrong in this business a lot, but this is really right. an interesting <laughs> one because of these lines setting up, and it gives more impetus to astrology. You know, Tim, one of the things on my bucket list was to live long enough to see, you know, CNBC have a segment on financial astrology, three to five minutes, and I'm sure it'll come from. MIT or uh, Stanford or, you know, the uh, London School of Economics, someplace like that. It won't come from somebody in uh, Tucson, Arizona, like Arch and I are here. It'll be someone <laughs> from academia proving it. But when you look at these lines, I mean, this this is really amazing how it sets up channel lines and they're they're based on what's happening in the heavens, which is really quite amazing. Right, and that's the unique uh, feature of this particular tool or this particular approach. Uh, you know, we can uh, put in support and resistance lines based on the price history with our trading chart, and that's conventional technical analysis. That's still 100% valid, and we use those tools. We use things uh, like L8 wave projections and Fibonacci retracements. Uh, but when we add the planetary lines, we have a confirming factor that's not based on the trading history itself. And so that's what gives us a little extra spin and and uh, when it becomes a confirming factor, if we find, for example, a match with a Fibonacci line with one of these planetary lines, uh, it's like gold. Well, well, there's nothing like gold, Tim. Hey, Tim, <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for being on our show today. And you will be on on May 11th. Can you uh, confirm that? Yeah, we, we can, can make that happen. Or maybe we should look at May 12th uh, <laughs> to uh, uh, see what happened <laughs> hey, on May 11th. Huh? <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? That, 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 boy, you guys with astrology and cycles are so much above me. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make it May 12th. We're going to have Tim Bost on. And we'll write this down right now. All right. yeah, that, that'll be good. Pulling so my listen. calendar as we speak. Yeah. That will okay. be on uh, Tuesday. One, other, we got it. one okay. other question here. One right. other question, Tim, if you have a minute or two. Sure. Can you give us your bird's eye view of the coronavirus as, as it relates to astrology? Is there any link there that uh, hmm. that looks interesting? Uh, yes, and in, in fact, and one of the things that uh, uh, has a lot of astrologers looking at the coronavirus is exactly this Saturn-Pluto conjunction. But of course, we don't get uh, pandemics every time we have a Saturn-Pluto conjunction. So uh, one of the factors that I've been uh, tracking with regard to this uh, is the interaction of Neptune, the planet Neptune, with the trans-Neptunian factor Apollon. Uh, and in fact, I've, I'm doing a series of webinars every two weeks weeks uh, focusing just on coronavirus issues because I've had so many inquiries on that. Uh, and so uh, we're trying to con do continuing investigations there. And uh, uh, it's, it's very, very, uh, you know, uh, uh, shall I say, experimental at, at this point. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. But Neptune's associated with diseases and the spread of disease. Apollon is the trans-Neptunian factor. We, we typically associate it with commerce. We like to see Apollon come into play because it spreads things far and wide. <laughs> and uh, that's the whole energy of Apollon. So we combine diseases spreading far and wide, and we end up with pandemic situations. Uh, so what we've been tracking here is the uh, the midpoint of uh, 
uh, Neptune and, and Apollon and finding some very, very intriguing correspondences there from an astrological standpoint. Uh, but in terms of the cycles uh, and some of the potential duration here, uh, the, the earliest that we were forecasting when it first broke out as a potential turning point was late June to early July of this year. Uh, that's still a, a possibility, uh, but the disease is not going to be over with. Uh, we are using the SARS uh, outbreak of, uh, uh, a few years back uh, as kind of a model for this whole dynamic. And with mm -hmm. the SARS uh, uh, event, uh, it took them 18 months to come up with a vaccine and to declare the disease under control. And that was mm -hmm. remarkable because it was so rapid in terms of the his history of epidemiology. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when the SARS was declared uh, done <laughs> uh, by the World Health Organization, uh, th that happened to be exactly on a Neptune station that that occurred. So we're watching those Neptune stations and uh, the uh, uh, dynamics with Apple on as well. It's a very, very complex mm -hmm. picture, uh, but uh, I think we're going to see uh, uh, the necessity for more isolation for some time here, mm -hmm. so keep those masks handy yeah. and uh, wave okay, at your neighbors. We will. <laughs> uh, Tim, stay with us so you can tell us about the free webinar you're going to have. Uh, Surely. Be glad okay. to. We'll be right back with Tim Boss, Financial Cycles Weekly, 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that is transforming into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Tim Boss. Could you tell us about your webinar coming up, Tim? Surely, uh, you know, for, uh, I appreciate being on these uh, sessions with you because it gives me a chance to do audacious things like make that forecast. Uh, this webinar is not about forecasting, though. <laughs> uh, in fact, this is designed as a training session uh, to help traders, regardless of your level of experience, uh, identify some possible tweaks uh, to your trading process in terms of the market analysis and timing of the trades uh, that can give you better results uh, in the long run. Of course, our bias is toward the astro trading and showing how that can be incorporated. And it's really a nuts and bolts uh, training session. And we're offering that uh, f uh, free of charge uh, to uh, encourage people to take a look at the astro trading advantage uh, and to uh, be able to, to connect uh, with that in their own trading. Again, if you're a seasoned trader, I think you'll find some things interesting here. If you're totally new to trading, that's okay, too, because uh, we try to simplify things as much as possible during that session. Uh, we do have uh, multiple sessions scheduled, so if you go to bit.ly uh, slash trade tweak t r a d e t w e a k that's all lowercase uh, and that will get you to a registration page you can sign up for the webinar uh, we do ask that you reserve a seat to there uh, so that uh, we can uh, uh, connect with you uh, for the session uh, but there's no charge for the webinar itself and so it comes with a money back guarantee. <laughs> yes, you, you got well, it, buddy. You, you, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. Hey, Tim, <laughs> thank, thanks, for, uh, we'll, thanks for joining us. And then we'll just us. have yeah. to suck the knowledge right out of your head that you've gained yeah. for free, right? <laughs> you want your money back. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for joining us, and please be safe down there because I know you have a lot of nursing homes, and I imagine there's more coronavirus there than any place in the state, so just be careful. Right. Yeah, we, we've had uh, nine different nursing homes in this county alone uh, with outbreaks, uh, so we've got a fairly serious uh, situation here, but uh, that's what you get with the aging population. So um, well, I hope I to just keep right that. on aging, personally. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. my aim anyway. <laughs> Stay on the green side of the grass, Tim. We'll see you later. We'll, and we'll do that. Us. Thank you, Larry. Have a great day. See, see you all on Monday, folks. May God bless.